Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks to Ipsomet for the invitation. I'm honored to be here with Professor Helen Murphy sharing our experience with the CAM APS system. First, from our perspective as healthcare professionals, We've been using AID system for some years now. We have more than 50, more than 500 systems in our clinics, meaning around 50% of our people with type 1 diabetes, something we're very proud of. And we've been lucky enough to be able to share our real world data. So when the CAMEPE system was launched here in Spain two years ago, we had to decide if the systems already in the market were enough or if we should challenge ourselves a bit more as a team and incorporate into our practice this technology that was uh, completely new to us. So first of all, we considered who could benefit the most from this system. We talked to our pediatricians and we agreed to select the little kids and the women planning pregnancy to be the first ones to try the new system. Because although both are extremely challenging population, neither, neither of them had approval for AID systems. So the pediatrician started with the little kids. Of course, the parents saw the small size of the system as a huge advantage, especially in these tiny babies. And we started with the women planning pregnancy. Uh, we knew that we were going to be learning at the same time as them and extrapolating our experience with other systems. I've been myself doing the pregnancy clinic for years, and we all know how complicated it is to reach these tight targets if you want to optimize the pregnancy outcomes. We had read the ADAT study with its impressive result, results in pregnancy. And we had heard Helen Murphy at the ESD and ATTD explaining how this system had been specifically designed for pregnancy and how it should be offered to all women before or during pregnancy. Apart from other reasons, because this system gives us the option to set low glucose targets when needed, especially in the second part of the pregnancy. So we designed a protocol with what we call a pre-training session in clinic where we check the phone compatibility and we download the app so the women can practice at home. And after that, the initiation session, normally in groups if possible, where we explain all the details of the system and where we start auto mode I said that this is a challenging population, but it's also a very motivated population. Uh, they were happy to be offered a system specific to pregnancy, and it was really nice working with them. So now, in total, we have initiated 32 systems, 60% in adults, 40% uh, for pregnancy, in people coming from NDI, from pump therapy, or from other systems. And we presented our first experience at the ADA in June. So, focusing now on pregnancy, what we have now is six women in preparation for pregnancy, two women are now pregnant, and four women have already had their babies. Five of these women came from MDI, and the rest switched from other systems. And three of these women initiated the CAM APS system already in pregnancy. We've been using both sensors, Libre 3 and Descon GCs. And I'm going to present two of the cases. I've selected first the most challenging one you will see, 
and second, the in, in some way, the easiest one. So first case, her name is Irene. She is 22 years old. She's, have, she's had type 1 diabetes since the age of 12. She had a history of recurrent DKA. On NDI, her timing range was 34%. GMI was 9.5%. She used the sensor only 43% of the time her glucose profile, and her HbA1c, unfortunately, 14, 12, terpensin. And she came to the clinic saying that she was 13 weeks pregnant. This was mid-August last year, and she was very, very upset and very, very scared. We decided to initiate the CAM API system as soon as we could. She learned very fast. She said that the app was so simple to learn. And this is when we initiated AutoMode. First, the previous days on NDI. And now in AutoMode, you see an impressive improvement in glucose control to go from 38% timing range, and this is gestational range now, to 62% timing range in the first two weeks of use of the system, 60% in the second trimester, and 65% in the third trimester. GMI was 6.5%. She had never had this glucose control before. Her glucose profile, very different to the previous one. And when we congratulated her on how well she was doing, she just said, it's just that now with the pan, it's as if I wasn't diabetic anymore. This is when Irene had her baby. She was in auto mode all the time. And she had a baby boy. His name is Miguel, 37 weeks, normal weight, no hypoglycemia. The second case is completely different. It was a planned pregnancy. Uh, better, it was an extremely planned pregnancy. Her name is Jael. She's 33 years old. She's a primary care physician. Uh, she had been using a closed loop system for two years. She had a history of two miscarriages, and she was planning a new pregnancy. So in this situation, we thought that the best option was to switch from the previous system to the CAM AP system before pregnancy. And she went from an amazing 81% timing range with the previous system to an even more amazing timing range of 86% with the CAM AP system. She got pregnant. You're going to see her glucose control during pregnancy. This is gestational range. First trimester. Here we reduce the glucose target. target. I'll explain in a minute. Second trimester. Third trimester. And 40 weeks. She was determined to reach the 40 weeks, and she did with an amazing 93% timing range. So excellent control throughout the whole pregnancy with no hypoglycemia. This is her daily detail, the ease of function, the boost function. We encourage the use of both of them during the pregnancy. Uh, the women are going to use them anyway, no matter what we say. Uh, one of the women said that the boost function was her favorite one because it helps control hyperglycemia very nicely. This is when Hael had her baby. Again, she was in auto mode all the time. Now the nurses in the maternity unit understand that they have to let the women keep their mobile phones with them all the time. And she had a baby girl. Her name, her name is Vera, 40 weeks, normal weight. Again, no hypoglycemia. Regarding glucose targets, what we did with Jael was to go from 95 
90 milligrams per deciliter before pregnancy and in the third tri trimester. Normally, we use more than one target per day. Two, 85, 80 milligrams per deciliter in the second part of the pregnancy and to go back to higher targets after uh, the baby was born. Actually, with Jael, it had been a bit different. We had been a bit less aggressive with uh, Irene than with Jael because Irene was our first pregnancy and it took us some time to learn and to feel comfortable with uh, low targets and to uh, see that they are safe and that the risk of hypoglycemia is very low. So summarizing the settings in both pregnancies, we were progressively reducing glucose targets and carb ratios and adjusting body weight. And after the baby were born, we did exactly the opposite, to increase glucose targets, to increase carb ratios, and to adjust bad body weight. And these changes after the babies are born are very important to avoid what happened to Hael, uh, that she forgot to increase the target after the baby was born because she was busy with the baby and she only realized it when she started having hypos. What we do now is to teach the, the husbands, the partners, how to change the settings in the app. And they like that because they, they feel involved and they feel that they are being helpful. And finally, our outcomes. The nice comments we've had from the women, thanks to my new system, I'm enjoying this pregnancy. It gives me peace of mind. This pump has changed my life. Our babies, you know Miguel and Vera. We also have Paula and Elena, all born with normal weight, healthy babies. One of the, of the husbands said, I think this way of managing diabetes is very clever. I'm sleeping better myself. And this specific comment from one of the nurses in the maternity unit, even though she didn't know uh, much about closed loop systems, she said, uh, after examining one of the babies, she said, this child is better than if her mom didn't have diabetes. And this single comment for her mom and also for us as a team meant that it had all been worth the effort. And with that, I think we've covered our exciting uh, journey with the CAM APS system to conclude that uh, we have to overcome clinical inertia and get out of our comfort zone that uh, the best way to learn how to use any technology is by actually using it and that I really believe we need to give choices to people with diabetes and to adapt to their needs and circumstances. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Pilar. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and really, that echoes our own experience. And yeah, I've not done a head count properly, but I think, we, I think I've managed somewhere when I last did it, it was 150, but it must be now closer to 250 women on hybrid closed loop systems. But actually, I've not learned any more. The learning is exactly as Pilar says in the first few patients, and then it's easy. Um, I think we are actually on time. So if there, if, if there are any questions, please come up to the microphone, introduce yourselves. If you're shy about doing it now, email us afterwards. Um, it is as Pilar says, you learn it by doing it. And it's not hard. <laughs> Anyone brave enough to come up and ask a question? Yeah, please come to the mic. Is there a cost involved of using the app? Or is it free to the user? The, it depends really on what. So the question was, is there a cost involved in using the app? So our planned implementation across the NHS in the UK is that we will have a cost that is for the entire system. So that will include the pump, the app, the sensor, and the phone. Um, and we know from the concept trial that just using CGM alone saves the NHS approximately 24 million pounds per year. The treatment difference with hybrid closed loop is many fold greater. 
So we expect any cost to be trivial compared to the cost savings. And, you know, yes, we can cost things like neonatal care unit admissions. We cannot put a cost on some of the experiences that Pilar has just mentioned. And, you know, we cannot put a cost on saving babies' lives. We've estimated how many babies' lives would be saved per year, and it's between 90 and 100. Yeah, you can't put a price on that. Hello. Hello, Carmen Quiroz from Barcelona. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, um, your presentations. They are very interesting. And I have a practical question for uh, Dr. Murphy. Do you have, uh, do you use Dexcom 1, or uh, sorry, Dexcom G6, or uh, Freestyle Libre, especially in pregnancy? Do you have experience with both? Do there are any differences? Yeah, so, I mean, the question is, are there any differences between the sensors? I mean, I can't give you a good answer because in my clinic, we exclusively use the Dexcom G6. Pilar has used both, so maybe you want yeah, to comment? Our experience is very little to compare. Actually, some of the women switch from one sensor to the other, depending on the uh, phone compatibility and so on, mm -hmm. but we don't have data enough, enough to compare. If there are no other questions, then yes, I'm delighted to draw this session to a close. We will be talking more about pregnancy-specific hybrid closed loop in the diabetes allosia special tech session at 1.30. And a lot of what Pila and I have said is already available online. So yeah, overcome your clinical inertia. This is not difficult, and it is life-changing for our patients. And it is an enormous privilege for us as healthcare professionals to do what we do in this era of ever-improving technology. So good luck, enjoy using it in your clinics and make a real difference to the lives of women and babies. Thank you. Mm.